What's going on YouTube? Another big match from Washington Command Post. My name is JD. We'll dive into this. Before I do, uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter. It's Commander J Plank. Puts a lot of smack on there. I've been smacking on the Colts last week. And now we're going to talk about the Lions and Washington. Sunday, 1 o'clock at, at uh, Ford Field in Detroit, Michigan. So, um, this game, uh, we are actually, uh, I want to talk about last game real quick. Because these idiots, these idiots who uh, predict who's going to win the game, Ed Washington projected the, to lose pretty bad. Um, eight people. It's it's so funny. The media, the media on one side of their mouth is going to be is like, oh hey, um, yeah, we have the Jaguars projected to beat Washington, and then when Washington beats the Jaguars, they're like, oh, it's just a Jaguar. It's not a big deal. I'm like, you guys had us set the lose like eight of eight of your. Eight or ten pundits that give their freaking opinions on our football team had us pick to lose. So I'm gonna go to the next screen, and six out of your ten pundits have us pick to lose. Again, I like that. I I'm fine with that. Pick us to lose every game. Okay, especially if the result's gonna be like like last week. Okay, I like that. So I'm gonna talk about this team. First, I'm gonna talk about what the Lions have and what Washington's dude be. Okay? All right, so I'm gonna go to this. First off, we got this guy, but I'm gonna go back to this because that's more in line with like talking about this topic. Okay, first, Lions quarterback Jared Goff. He is better than Trevor Lawrence. He's not much better, but he is better. He's more experienced. He's not as mobile as Trevor Lawrence, but Trevor Lawrence really like, kill us with his legs. Okay, so um, Jared Goff is is a slightly better quarterback. He's better in a sense that he understands the game better. He's not better in a sense that he's more accurate. He's probably about the same amount of accuracy as Trevor Lawrence is. So, not not a great quarterback, but not bad either. He, he's definitely a um, he's not a he's a replacement level. He's not a replacement. He's above replacement level. Okay, if you have Jared Goff, you're, you're kind of okay at the quarterback position. You're not. You may be looking, but you're not going to like ship him off for nothing. Okay, he's a good he's a good enough quarterback. That's the best way I'll put it. He's a good enough quarterback. Running backs is really the strong suit of this team. You have uh, Swift and you have Williams. Probably they combined they are both better easily than the, the receiving the running back core for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, they are better. Out of the backfield catching the ball, running the ball, they're a little bit better. Okay? Um, so God give them the props. They're both of them are great. Now Swift is questionable for Sunday. Um, I think the way that they're talking is they want him to play and he's gonna try to play. Um, but just that is what's out there now is he is questionable. So you have uh is it Devon, it's not Devontae, but whatever. It's it's Swift. I don't remember his first name. And then you have uh, Williams is the other running back. Both of them are good one-two punch. They both catch out of the backfield. They are both very versatile running backs. The, the modern pro NFL running backs today is is what they are. So that that team that part's gonna have to be something that's gonna be handled. That's gonna be handled pretty pretty early in the game and, and force the ball out of their hands, which is what I think Washington's gonna do. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, receiving core, um, you have uh, who are the receivers? You have Chark, who was with, ja with the Jags last year. Um, you have Chark, you have Brown, and those. Are, and then I think Josh Reynolds is the third one. Not not really a, a very well known receiving core. I would say the receiving core is not is like a half step below that of the Jaguars. Um, uh, so the receiving core is just a little bit worse than the Jaguars. I wouldn't sleep on them. I mean, our, our corners didn't exactly play great, and, and Jacksonville didn't have great receivers, so I wouldn't sleep on them at all. But they're 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 okay. They're not like you can do worse in the NFL, but it's not bad. It's a, it's a decent receiving core. Um, they actually have a really good receiver, but he's injured right now, and he's gonna be out for most of the season, so we don't have to worry about him. I think it's um, I think it's Williams. Um, now let's talk about the probably the best position on the offense is the tight end. Um, I don't know their backup tight end, but I know T.J. Hawkinson is a freaking dog, man. That guy's a beast. He is very good. He comes from that Iowa, Iowa, Iowa State, whatever, whichever one it is. They are very good at just churning out good tight ends, and he's one of them. He's a very good tight end. I he would start on most teams in this, the NFL. He's a very good tight end. So that's going to be something we got to handle, considering mostly linebackers are covering tight ends, and our linebackers are garbage at everything. Um, so that's the one part of the offense that's really going to be concerning. That and the running backs are the two that are going to be tough because 
Usually linebackers cover running backs out of the backfield, and linebackers cover our tight ends, and linebacker is our worst defensive position by far. So we shall see. Um, but now to get to the uh, offensive line. The offensive line um, didn't do bad against the Eagles, but the problem is the center and, the, and one of their tackle or guards is injured right now. So um, they're not going to have their starters, not going to have their full repertoire. I think we're going to be – it's like Jacksonville. Jacksonville had a significantly better off, offensive line than this team has. Okay, you had some all pros on that offense. You have one all pro and, and Sheriff. You had some pretty good guys. That they, they had a very good, like, solid offensive line. And we were still getting to, car, getting to Trevor Lawrence. We were still getting home. We, had, we still got a couple sacks. And we had some, we were just so close. We were just a half second off getting there again. Okay, there's some that were just so close. And the Lions are not gonna, don't, do not have the offensive line the Jacksonville Jaguars had. And on top of that, now they have two injuries on top of that off, with that offensive line. So I personally don't think their offensive line is, is, is going to be much of an issue. I think, it's, I think our defense is going to eat a little bit. Um, and that's going to cause uh, Jared Goff to make some mistakes. It's going to be a lot different than Trevor Lawrence. I mean, we got we got the Trevor Lawrence, and he made so he got some happy feet, and he got some hands on some throws. It's really funny whenever someone makes a mistake, they're like, "Washington got lucky; he made a mistake." No, you, you get lucky because um, it's not luck; it's by design. Like, there's a reason why someone goes bad. Like, I used to used to coach high school basketball. And I, I used to coach JV team, and we had to call in our scores to a newspaper. Now, I, I lived on a different county than a newspaper, so the newspaper has always had some kind of negative bias towards my team because, you know, we're out of county. So I would call in, and we had a game where we scored 75 points, and the opposition scored about 25. And it was actually a, it was supposed to be a pretty good game. The last game we played was very close. And uh, I told them to score... And the guy's comment was, wow, that's a bad shooting night. Couldn't hit a shot, huh? I'm like, I was like, yeah, well, there's a reason for that. There's a thing called defense, and we play it. So that's like last week, Travis Eaton um, had a touchdown. If he, Well, a potential touchdown. We don't know. He caught the ball on the three-yard line, we'll turn up field. There was someone bearing down on him. So we do not know if it was a touchdown or not. But he had a touchdown, and he dropped it. Now, three, three or four plays before that, he got his freaking bell rung. He got freaking split in half by Derek Forrest. All right, so there's a reason for why things happen. There's a reason why if Terrell Owens played Sean Taylor, he had his head on a swivel when he went over the middle because Terrell Owens going to knock his head off. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Sean Taylor was going to knock his freaking head off. Okay, there's a reason for that. It's why, it's why you have hard-hitting safeties. and, and you, It's why you tackle and hit, and, and, uh, and hit good and hit correctly and hit legally. Because you can hit the hit legally, and the guy knows a legal hit's coming. Okay, if if Derek Force were to level his helmet and got a 15-yard penalty, maybe Travis even wouldn't look, wasn't looking out for it at, the way he was uh, in that game. So it's by design. There's a lot of things that are like by design that are because of what we do. Okay, if we rattle a quarterback and he makes mistakes, is the quarterback making mistakes, or are we rattling the quarterback that made him make the mistake? I think there's a little bit there. It's like Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz threw two picks. Okay. One pick, he he, read, he threw the ball late. That's what it was. It wasn't that he made a bad read. He threw the ball late. He was, the receiver was open initially, but Carson double clutch, and when he threw it, he threw it late, and the guy closed the gap. That's all there was to it. And the second one, the guy was hidden behind our own offensive lineman, and when he threw the ball, the guy jumped out and snatched it. Okay, it, it, the second one was I don't think it was Carson Wentz's fault. It wasn't bad. It wasn't a great throw on his part. Like he should have made sure the receiver was looking. Like the running back, but it wasn't like he just threw it right at the guy in the guy's hands. The guy was hiding very well. Watch the replay. It's a very good play by 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 that player. I think it's the the first overall pick. It was a very good play on his part. And stupid not to not to understand that sometimes good players make great plays. Okay, it's like Carson put the ball on the money. Terry McLaurin in stride. Had Terry McLaurin hadn't had that since his first game playing with Case Keenum. Okay, so th those things are, are great players make great plays. Okay, and sometimes, you know, you, just, you can't help that very much. Now, I think Carson, um, we're playing a, not as good as – I'll get into that here in a minute. So that's what's going on the uh, offensive side of the ball with Detroit. They moved the ball pretty well, but I don't think I don't think the Eagles' defensive line is quite as good as our defensive line. So I think we're, we're going to stuff the run. My, my strategy would be to get out early, 
take the running game out of the game, put the ball in, in Jared Goff's hands for most of it, make him throw a lot, get after him, pin the ears back, go get the quarterback. Um, that would be my strategy, but um, I mean, I think the strategy every game get up and then, you know, make those team play from behind, take out the running game, make them one dimensional. Defensively, uh, their defense isn't, isn't like bad, um, but they're cor- I'll start with the corners. Corners are horrible with that team, they're not very good at all. Play a lot of man, uh, which is good for us. Um, you're not gonna be able to cover our man guys one on one. A zone would give the defense line a little bit more time to get to our quarterback, but playing man, now, uh, Playing man's gonna get gonna get you burned. I promise you that much, especially against Washington. Our receiving core, their corners will not be able to hang with our receiving core. It's not. And if you're playing man, they're gonna get open real quick. Carson will get the ball out fast. It, it that's that's just what's gonna happen. We actually got the ball very fast to Carson Wentz this week for the most part, and that's gonna be our strategy this week: get the ball fast. Our corners are gonna play man, get the ball really quick. Man, it develops quicker. Uh, routes develop quicker. Uh, zone takes a little bit of time. That's why we play zone. It's to give our defense a lot of time to get to them. But if it's a soft zone, most quarterbacks can pick it apart if they have a, 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 an ample of like three seconds or three seconds pretty much. You know, all you need to pick it apart. So, um, defense, uh, secondary is not great. It's not bad. It's not great though. Um, obviously, I mean, Eagles put up 30 plus against them in week one. But a lot of that was running the ball. So, we'll see. Um, so, apparently, they can be run on. That's the, it's kind of the takeaway I have from that. So, defensive line, it's not bad. You got the second overall pick. He's a solid player. Um, but you don't want to give him momentum. He didn't have a great game against the Eagles. I can't think of his name right now. He played for he played for Michigan. So. And the linebacking core for the Lions, I think, is probably their best defensive group. But overall, the defense isn't that great. And like, like I said, just got smoked by the Eagles. And the Eagles might have a very good offense, so that might be a very bad scale to grade them on. However, I don't see the defense from them being super great. They're a very physical team. That's what's the upside to the Lions. They're very physical, have a good running game. I have two good running backs. They have a solid tight end for a good safety valve, so on and so forth. Then Jared Goff is a formidable quarterback. Okay, now let's talk about the matchup we have. Um, like I said, I already talked about the defense. I think I think Carson's going to eat. I think Terry's going to eat. I think our sec- our receiving core is going to eat. I would like to establish a more of a run with Antonio Gibson, just a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I I, I think Gibson's going to going to eat in this game. I I hope he does. I hope we run the ball and he gets over 100 yards rushing. I think that's going to be the determining factor is, is uh, controlling the clock, getting the lead, and forcing them to be one dimensional. That's going to help us immensely. That's that's what I would do in this game. Um, I mean, you can't dictate. I mean, you can only play defense so long. I really hope our defense stops playing the soft zone crap. Okay, play physical. Get into the defenders or offensive players' faces and be the initiator of everything. Attack success. Okay, I, that's what I want for us. I want us to attack success. We can run on this team and we can throw on this team. I don't think offense is going to be our problem. The, defense, the problem I have is our defense. Will our defense? Step up and do some formidable things, and, and, and not wait till the last play of the game, pretty much, to get a turnover when it could have had a ton of turnovers before that. If they just played a little, a little smarter and a little tighter. Okay, we have a lot of momentum. What's not wasted? We're at, what's going to week three, facing the Eagles at both of us two and two, and basically we're in competition to win the division because Dallas isn't going to win the division now. They're not going to win any games with Cooper Rush. Okay, and I, I think the Giants got lucky. That the Titans let him hang around. Okay, I take one Barkley. I love to see resurgence. Take one Barkley. He's, he's a good player. I like him. I go to Penn State, and I like Penn, I, I, I. It's not my favorite team, but I cheer for Penn State, and he's a good dude. But I don't think that I don't think the Giants are are quite there. I don't think they're quite at that point. And I, I kind of think that we're at the point where I don't want to say it's exactly like the way Ron said. Um, but Ron said, well, you just need, you just need to build a team and drop a quarterback in. I, we might have that. The only thing we did is we didn't finish building the team because our linebacking core is not where it needs to be. I'm confident in the offensive line. I'm confident in our receiving core. I'm very confident in our tight ends and our running backs. I'm even confident in Carson Wentz. The offense is fine. We really don't need anything else in offense except maybe some line depth because we're getting some injuries. But I think what was really smart on Ron's part was all offseason he kept shuffling guys around. And, and, and on the offensive line. And the reason why that's smart is because now the team is used to 
doing that. Okay, there's some continuity there. There's some like they're used to like having a random line out there, so they they've learned to communicate better. So I think that that's my take on that. I think that's where the benefit to how that the off season was handled and the offensive line situation was handled is you're kind of used to. Um, it's it's good to have chemistry, but if you have chemistry and you're only playing five guys together and never have anyone else and someone gets injured, that chemistry's ruined. Whereas now the offensive line has has been trained and then is in the mindset like, okay, I got to do my job no matter who's next to me. We got to communicate this. We got to do our job. And that, I think that's actually paying dividends because our offensive line, no matter who's out there, whether it's Deke Charles, whether it's Wes Schweitzer, doesn't matter who's at the guard position. It, it, it seems to be doing just fine. No one gets their, no, no one gets cooked, basically. That's the best way to put it. No one gets like just their ass whipped. So that's the way I personally have viewed that. I think that's actually might be one of the clever, tricky, um, strategical things that Washington has been doing this offseason is like shuffling the offensive line around so they have a lot of variations so that no one, everyone learns to communicate without just having the chemistry of having only five guys out there. I think it's very important. So the, the only question I have about the defense is the defense. Cornerbacks, I, I, safeties I'm fine with. I think safeties are good. I think we have two good, uh, three good safeties. We have Percy Butler who's in the, in the mix as well. He's good. Safeties are good. They're going to come around. Okay, that seems to be Ron's forte. Is safeties, he can find safeties and make them play good. Okay, cornerbacks, I'm iffy on. Okay, because I think William Jackson played okay. I think Juice played okay, but Kendall Ford did not play okay. So I'm curious to see a bounce back from them. See if there's a strategic adjustment. But really, the 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 main the best unit is the defensive line. Okay, and defensive line didn't do bad. The, the, the run game didn't do a lot. The, they got to the quarterback. They, they pressured Trevor Lawrence. So that was good. But the question with me is the linebacking core. Jamin Davis finally got called out by his coaches for not playing good this week. Um, not by his coaches, by one, Jack Del Rio. Um, so they finally got called out for not playing well. So I don't know. Maybe that's going to make him regress. Maybe that's going to actually you know kick him in the ass a little bit. We'll see. Uh, but the, the linebacking core is the weakest. I mean, no other teams consider Buffalo Nickel as much as us because they don't have a third linebacker. It still surprises me that Washington did not go after Blake Martinez. It still surprises me that they did not go after Blake Martinez. They had the money. You could have paid him a decent amount of money for this year and gone after Blake Martinez. But I don't know. Maybe they don't have a spot left. I don't know. Okay, he got cut by the Giants. He was available, and I don't know why Washington did not go after him. I don't. It, there's a lot of things I don't know why, but uh, money-wise, might have been why they didn't go after anyone closer to more in free agency rather than after cuts. Um, and like I said, it's before Ron's pretty stubborn. That's why I didn't give up on Derek Forrest. Um, he likes his guys. He picked them, so he wants to see same, the same with Benjamin St. Juice. He's not gonna give up on guys he picks. He's stubborn to make it work. Um, so linebacker core is my biggest question, and the two things that linebackers cover the most. When it comes to a passing game, or are their responsibilities more in a passing game, is running backs and tight ends, and those have to be the strength of the team we're about to play. So this could be this could be uh, them getting it right, and this is a good team to get it right on because they're going to go that way a lot. Or it's going to be everyone else covered, and the tight ends and running backs eat, and they eat a lot against our defense or against our linebackers. So. My prediction for the game, my prediction for Washington in this game, I do think we will win. I had us projected to win both these games, and we lose to the Eagles, technically. That's how I projected this out. Um, but I have us winning this game. I think Washington will hit the 30 mark, and I think uh, I don't think they're gonna. I think they're gonna be one dimensional. Basically, they're gonna score a touchdown early. We're gonna score more, and they're gonna try. They're gonna stop them a couple times, but they're not gonna be able to stop us. And uh, we're not gonna do what the what the uh, Detroit, the Eagles did and let them come back. We're going to win. We're going to get 34 points and they're going to get about, uh, they're going to get 20. We're going to win 34 to 20. That's my projection for this this game. I think Carson Wentz is going to have, I actually heard on the Washington Football Talk podcast, they're talking about, it's called the Roller Coaster Index. Where instead of projecting how many touchdowns Carson Wentz will have or interceptions, you project the total of both touchdowns and turnovers. It's uh, pretty cool. I'm not going to do that. I, I, they said three and a half, but I think it's going to be more. I think it's going to have more than three touchdowns for sure. Um, I, I think it'd be crazy not to have more than three touchdowns against this defense. Against this secondary, for sure. 
um, we're going to have more than three touchdowns. I can promise you that uh, from Carson Wentz. Uh, wh whether he has a lot of turnovers, that'll be a different question. But I do think it's going to be a pick the team, pick the defense apart by Carson Wentz because he, he's going to be able to just move that ball down the field just like our first two possessions against the Jag Jags. Boom, 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 boom. And, yeah. What I do hope is that Scott Turner stops his bullshit, okay, and stops with his, oh, what's our trick play once we have momentum, okay? I, I said this on Twitter, and I've been arguing with this on Twitter with people who was like, oh, Scott Turner's so great. Like, he, he's doing better. He's very creative in creating plays. I will not take that away from Scott Turner. He is very creative when it comes to creating plays. Okay, I'll give him that, that credit, okay? He is very creative in that regard. However... The problem with Scott Turner is I don't think he actually ever really played professional football because he does not understand offensive momentum, okay? He consistently, this happened in the, in the game, but Wentz is actually so good he overcame it, okay? He consistently will do these stupid trick plays, stupid momentum killing plays that if you don't have success, it, it drains the offense and the defense capitalizes on that momentum and gets their gets their spirits up. It, it does it does a reverse effect of what he wants, and he needs to stop doing it. Period. I just stop doing your trick plays. Save that for when your offense stalls. You do trick plays and like gimmicks whenever the offense is stalled. You need a spark. He picks the most inopportune time to use a trick play on the second drive of the game when we're moving. We just completed a forty yard pass. Okay? We don't need a play that's reversed and loses us 10 yards after we just completed a 40-yard pass after the previous possession we scored a touchdown, and we're again moving the ball very well. Now, luckily, Carson Wentz, well, it was a penalty as well, but Carson Wentz is good enough to overcome these, these momentum shifts. Okay, And we actually got, a, I think it was a holding penalty or something, defensive holding or something like that. So we overcame it, and it didn't, like, really kill us. But last year with Taylor Heineke, it killed a lot of drives. I can, walk, I can walk through every game film with anyone if they want to, and I'll show you exactly when it happens, and you see the offense immediately get deflated. And it just goes down from there. And the offense takes about two or three possessions to recover from that much momentum being lost. Okay, now Carson Wentz is a little bit better at it. That doesn't give that doesn't that doesn't give him the credence to like, oh, I'm gonna run trick plays as much as I want, because Carson Wentz is, can uh, can compensate for, for for it. No. Call good plays. Your, your plays are very creative. You got a lot of good stuff going on. <coughs> but to save your trick plays for when the offense needs a spark, not for, <coughs> oh, offense is rolling, defense on their heels, let's give them an opportunity to get their momentum back. No. Sorry, that's my issue with Scott Turner. <coughs> like I said, very creative. A lot of offensive coordinators in the NFL are very creative. But this is an example of a of an offensive coordinator doesn't understand. Sorry, I'm hiccuping when I'm not trying to be loud with it. There we go. I uh, got one out. He doesn't understand how to uh, how to carry on momentum. So, but um, that's my video. Like I said, my predictions: thirty-four to twenty. Carson will put up thirty in this game. Uh, 30 plus, and I think it's gonna be 34 to 20, maybe 21 if we get three touchdowns, something like that. But uh, make sure to subscribe, like, comment down below what you think. Am I? You, what do you think of Scott Turner? Do you think he's crazy? Do you think he's bad? Whatever the case may be, let me know. And uh, hail to the Commanders, and see you.